someone discovered a living creature in their own eye. Not in a dream, not through horror movies, but in real life, on a normal morning. It starts with simple symptoms, a slight itching sensation, a little redness in the eyes, and sometimes fleeting dim light streaks across the pupils. But when that person looked in the mirror, the truth surfaced like a nightmare. A white streak, as thin as a thread, almost transparent, slowly swam in the corner of the eye. Rubbing my eyes didn't make it go away. It crawls, it whines, it exists. And more than that, it's a living thing. A parasitic organism, using the human body as a host, lies nestled within the thin layer of fluid between the conjunctiva and the eyeball. For nearly four decades, I've been reading and analyzing medical records, witnessing horrifying parasitic cases such as thorny-headed worms deeply embedded in brain tissue, fly larvae nesting in ear canals, and brain-eating amoebas emerging from seemingly harmless swimming pools. But of all those things, nothing made me feel as cold as the file with the code CDC Gulosa 042. Before we begin, if you're interested in true but terrifying stories from the medical world, don't forget to subscribe to The Dr. Late Life. Here I will tell you about the gruesome medical records that textbooks would never dare to print. And right now is Abby's story. The patient is Abby, a 26-year-old living in rural Oregon. She works on a livestock farm, frequently coming into contact with cows, flies, and animal waste. Abby started with mild symptoms. An itchy left eye in the morning, occasional slight redness, and slight blurriness in the evening. She thought it was due to a straw dust allergy, and continued her daily activities as usual. A week later, the condition worsened. Every morning when she woke up, her eyes were stuck shut, and she had to wash them with warm water to open them. Her eyelids were slightly swollen, and sometimes they watered constantly, even though she wasn't crying. It felt like something was gently crawling over her every time she blinked. She went to the doctor, was prescribed anti-inflammatory eye drops, and went home feeling reassured. Two days later, Abby began to see flashes of light like reflections, but they were inside her eye. Every time she looked in the mirror, she saw a flash of light pass across her pupil. Try taking a video with your phone. When she turned on the flash, she was shocked to discover small, very small, movements in the white part of the eye. Abby pulled out the cotton swab, gently pulled down her eyelid, and for the first time in her life, she extracted a living creature from her eye. It's a small worm, about one centimeter long, transparent, soft like a noodle, and it bends when exposed to light. It was still moving in the glass jar she used to hold soil samples in the laboratory. She went to the local hospital carrying a jar of live creatures. The on-duty doctor initially thought this was a joke, but when they examined Abby's eyes under a magnifying glass, they discovered at least two other creatures moving slowly beneath the conjunctiva. Abby was immediately transferred to a higher level hospital. Here, a team of ophthalmologists and parasitologists performed worm removal using microsurgical instruments. But the atmosphere in the operating room that day was no longer normal. When the first worm was scooped out, a young doctor standing beside the table stepped back, hand over his mouth, his face pale. The nurse beside her immediately turned away, and someone coughed violently. Everything happened in terrifying silence. One of the veteran doctors, who had performed hundreds of microsurgeries, stood still for a few seconds. He muttered, Impossible. This is a human eye. No one could believe their eyes when the second, then the third worm was pulled out, all still alive, weakly wriggling, as if they knew they had just been pushed out of their homes. Over the course of 20 days, they removed a total of 14 live worms from Abby's eyes. The first six were picked out by the patient himself at home. The remaining animals were processed in a sterile room. The worm species was identified as Thalasia gulosa, 
which commonly parasitizes cattle's eyes and is transmitted by eye-sucking flies. This is the first case recorded in humans in North America, which has left epidemiologists extremely surprised. However, what caught the doctor's particular attention was not only their biological characteristics, but also their strange behavior. During observation under a microscope, doctors discovered unusual behavior. The worms did not move randomly like other parasites. They react to strong light by contracting or changing direction. Some even hide at the edge of the cornea when a light is shown on them. During an endoscopy, as the doctor shone a light into the patient's eyeball to check the worm's reaction, a scene that silenced the entire room unfolded. One of the worms crawling slowly suddenly stopped, curling up close to the conjunctival membrane as if hiding. It didn't run away or curl up like it usually does. It just contracted, lay still, and clearly had a strange reaction to light, as if it were conscious. A strange feeling enveloped the young doctor, causing him to freeze, step back, and sweat profusely. Abby is starting to become sensitive to light. Every time she goes out, she has to wear sunglasses. She couldn't sleep, and often dreamed of images of worms crawling in her eyes, intertwining and blocking her vision. In a panic, she smashed all the mirrors in the house. She recounted with a look of shock, I don't dare look myself in the eye anymore. Just seeing the light reflecting from the mirror makes me think of the things that used to crawl around in it. Sometimes I feel like they're still out there somewhere, waiting for a chance to come back. When the report was published, many doctors around the world contacted us, providing additional cases of similar suspected infections, especially in livestock areas, where flies breed densely. The number of infections is still extremely rare, but what worries people is its silent spread. These creatures can live in your eyes for weeks, even months, causing only a few mild itches and a few unusual tears. A senior parasitologist concluded, the most dangerous thing is not the large size or the replication rate, but rather, they are creatures that can live silently right inside your body, in the place you are least guarded, like your own eyes. The initial symptoms of eye parasitic diseases are often easily mistaken for simple issues like dry eyes, allergies, or mild conjunctivitis. It's just a slight dull itch deep in the eye socket. I'm not sure if it's inside or behind the eyeball. Sometimes when you wake up, you might find your eyes are a little red, but after a few minutes, it will subside and you'll forget about it. Some people will experience blurred vision for the first few seconds after waking up similar to when you look at bright light for too long. Then there are days when you feel like there's something very small stuck in your eye, something that's not sand, nor an eyelash, but a dull ache, like something is crawling very slowly across a part of your vision. You look in the mirror, flip your eyelids, put in eye drops, even rub them gently, but you find nothing. That feeling is still there, light, Enough to make you uncomfortable, but not enough to make you take action. You learn to live with it. And just when you start getting used to that abnormality, that's when things begin to spiral out of control. If you've ever lived or worked in an environment with livestock, many flies or dirty water, be careful. If you notice any unusual signs that persist for more than three days, don't hesitate to visit an eye specialist for an examination. The eye parasite Thalazia golosa can be completely removed with minor surgery if detected early. However, if left untreated for too long, they can cause corneal haziness, chronic inflammation, and even permanent damage to the central vision area. Abby's story isn't a warning, but a reminder. Regarding the human body, no matter how sophisticated it is, it can still be invaded in ways we can't even imagine. Tiny, quietly living creatures can change a person's entire life if we ignore the first signs. And perhaps, what still haunts me today isn't the worms. But the truth is, the eyes, where we place our absolute trust, are sometimes the most vulnerable 
and easily invaded. Look in the mirror, but don't just do it to fix your hair or check your lipstick. Look deep into your own eyes. And if you feel itchy, even just a little, listen to your body. Don't let something live in your eyes for so long that it considers it home. Thank you for reading to the end of the story. If you find this knowledge worth spreading, please share and subscribe to Dr. Late Life so you don't miss the next terrifying medical records.